Okay, watching News X, I'm Rishabh Gulati. For the past 30 minutes, we've had a conversation on looking ahead. What India should do as a budgetary conversation gives us an opportunity to focus. Now, let us look back. Because there is economic activity that celebrates the cultural activity of a great nation. Think about how many people go and do the hop-on, hop-off tour in London or visit Windsor Castle. How many go to the Sistine Chapel just to look at the paintings? How many go to Pompeii? How many travel to see the pyramids at Giza? And entire industries for that country run on this. There is so much historicity right here in our own backyard and several Stellar initiatives have now started. So, there is now a Ramayana circuit. There is now a Buddha circuit that has been inaugurated by the Prime Minister. We ourselves have been doing coverage from Hampi to Kiladi to uh, Raki Gadi to Sinoli to Lothal of the remains of the Harappan civilization. There is so much to, and I am not even mentioning what is already known. Yeah, you go to the Taj Mahal. Yes, you go to the Red Fort. Uh, these are the known ones. Uh, Ajanta Eloda, Khajuraho. Absolutely fascinating places, Nalanda, fascinating places where the historicity of this country both to domestic tourists has a value. Now, I do not know why we are showing particularly uh, the Ramayana in Indonesia, there is an Indic civilization link there, but have a look at Nalanda, have a look at Hapi for example, absolutely gorgeous places. So, can we now look back? at what we already have and turn this into a staggeringly large economic sector. Just think of the number of Buddhists in the world who should be going to Bodh Gaya if they were given the right means, opportunity and comfort to travel there in a legitimate way. Think of how many go for the Hajj and think that Jainism, Buddhism, all right here. Now, let me open up this conversation. Akash Jindal is joining us on the broadcast. Madhav Nalapath is with us. Shashank Mani is with us. And Utpal Kaul and Ravi Bhatt both joining us uh, as historians. Let me start with uh, with Professor Nalapath. Professor Nalapath, now I, I know you have been you know, advocating this you know, Buddha circuit, Ramayana circuit. Some of them are now in motion. How hopeful can we be that we can do what we set out to do? That these can become a very legitimate cultural, religio-cultural and economic initiatives for the country. Rishabh, I am very glad that NewsX, uh, under your leadership, has been really emphasizing this. The fact is, we were taught, unfortunately, by, by, by our colonial uh, masters until 1947, to be, in a sense, both either unaware of or ashamed of our history. As a consequence, if you are ashamed of your history, if you are unaware of your history, you do not know uh, uh, which historical uh, 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 remnants there are <coughs> that are of value or you feel, well, well what are they? It is just a, a bit of ruin, nothing to really you know, be bothered about and if it goes to rack and ruin, so, so what? This has been an attitude all along and I am sorry to say that for a long time, in fact, I would like to say until recently, uh, I mean, uh, uh, until quite recently, that has been the attitude. It's now that we are beginning to understand the past that, you know, you had, for example, A.L. Basham, one of the great scholars of the world, an Australian, talking about the, the, the wonder that was India. Mm. You had scholars from all over Europe uh, uh, talking about the wonders of India. You had scholars... In, from China, from Japan, from Korea, talking about the same thing. And you're talking about Indonesia. The Indonesians absolutely love the Ramayana. And I'm delighted that at last we are setting uh, in play a way of showing the trek of Lord Ram to Lanka and back. Okay. The point is, the point is one last point, Rishabh, and that is these facts unify us. They unify us as a subcontinent, they unify us as a country, they unify us as a people. Okay, and now, okay. so now, 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 now there are fundamental problems I am trying to address here. I am just trying to give you a larger perspective here. For example, person like me, okay, 
if i were to tell you that i am traveling to rome and i went in to st peter's basilica and i saw the sistine chapel and everybody go wow amazing okay but if i were to tell you no no i am actually going to varanasi to see the new corridor and take the you know this ganga uh, uh, you know canal uh, uh, ferry and no no actually i am going to uh, ayodhya to see the ram temple they say oh ram temple ayodhya that's because all of you are hindu fundamentalists okay now if i can go to the sistine chapel and have nothing to do with religion it's a tourism because it's it's great art angkor wat is a perhaps better recognized temple complex than any temple complex in india which are even much older most of them of course in south india and this really pains it's a painful thing before i get in our two historians let me get shashank mani in shashank ji other than the obvious that you come to india you go see the taj mahal okay maybe the qutub minar everything else is on tourism is about you know the going to the tropics in kerala for a you know the 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 ambient environment to party in goa or head to the hills uh, for, for the north indian in summer it is not under the rubric of these great historical sites when everywhere else in the world it is on the rubric of great historical sites i think a part of the the issue is this hangover of colonialism but i don't think 75 years after independence we can keep on blaming that i think it's about ta- time we took charge of our own history we took charge of our own culture and to my mind there are two or three layers it is one is the great traditions that we have not least the great historical monuments you've said but also the great dance performances the the traditions that we have but i think what is the unexplored side of india the little traditions there are in every town in every village in every district little traditions and while of course we want to uh, attract the crowd which goes to the sistine chapel we also want to uh, encourage indians to travel within india which is something very critical yes. and i think that be the bulk of the social and the cultural experience of tourists in india and as you know dianek which is a famous indologist has said that much before india was defined by the foot by the political boundaries it was defined by the footsteps of the pilgrims but but what so is it, but, but mr mani there is an irony here because if i i went to vienna as, as a young student and it was during christmas time and the christmas opera in in at the at the at uh, in in vienna is a big deal you go to the grand opera hall uh, in delhi if i want to see the ramayana performed where do i go ramlila maidan or kamani auditorium where, what are my options no that's a good point so i think we need to put in a lot more in terms of developing our cultural sites and by the way it's not just about developing the site where you go there i think tourism traffic only gets economic uh, sustenance if they stay there therefore mm. cultural performances locally so footfalls are important but footfalls staying there for a period of time is equally important and i'd also like to say that i do something in my personal time called jagrati yatra and i find many americans many um, european young people like they used to go to europe before are hanging out in india and china now i'm china less so now so i think we should also be proud of the fact that india is getting attention the timing is right i think we are just rediscovering our own uh, may i say self esteem which has been okay but you, you mentioned mr mani and I, i want to ask a question before i get this audience in so china if if one to go one word to go one would say okay yeah the forbidden city in beijing the great wall you know these are obvious things that would come to your mind other than the taj mahal and maybe rajasthan sir because the forts of there are you know very popular with 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 tourists do you see large historical tourism that somebody says comes to you and say no i'm booking a travel and tour because i want to go see kashi and experience his historicity uh, is is it is it abysmally, abysmally small sir let's break it down into three parts if i am a person like i am i am currently in mumbai for some work otherwise i live in devaria there are many historical sites around so i should be encouraged to say can i go to kushinagar can i go to gorakhpur can i go to varanasi hmm. then the second one is if i am living in lucknow instead of heading out to sistine chapel as you suggested hmm. earlier hmm. can i go to shillong can i go other things and i do believe that that first step. and then there is a third one which mostly what we debate about is how do we make sure that beyond taj mahal there is something else and there are such beautiful uh monuments across the country but also equally important more than the historicity of the monuments is the culture that they inherit and the stories that they tell which have not been told by us frankly speaking i think europe and um, to a lesser extent north america tells those stories i mean north america has a 250 year old history in in many fashions yeah, abso- still- absolutely right you know but just just think about how many of you watching this broadcast okay uh, will think of of going to you know see buckingham palace and changing changing of the guards okay but you would not think of going to mahabalipuram Uh, and the irony is that in south india where we have the existent most ancient treasures 
we find it more you know the 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 least amount of tourism traffic is is being directed there so let me get akash indel before i before i get i promise you mr bart mr kolle you are the fulcrum of this conversation i'm coming to you akash indel what is the scale of the economic opportunity this is a under the rubric of a budget conversation what is the scale of diverting domestic tour and travel away just from the you know how we look at it hill station sea front that that will remain okay but in terms of the historicity what can be the potential in a place like nalanda in a place like hapi in a place like mahabalipuram in a place like ayodhya in a place like kashi ah uh, rishav i am too glad that you are doing show on this i think the potential is mammoth see we have been doing shows on the past 15 days on various channels i have been doing regarding unemployment of uh, unemployment in india now because of global recession we are having 8% unemployment 10% urban unemployment i think our unemployment could be taken care of well because of domestic tourism itself we shouldn't for, uh, forget how many stories we have seen on national news channels regarding people going to hill stations and no availability of rooms no availability of snacks yeah in kashmir this time around stations. i mean the, so, the so, room rates in jnk were were through the roof they would cost you more for a room in jnk than it would cost you in a five star in national in the national capital yeah that that's what where i was coming now see we have having so many tourists in kashmir shimla manali now see you have uh, very well mentioned many places now there are many other places like kurukshetra where i think which is 5000 year uh, old the ramayana circuit see now uh, one of our colleagues was talking about north america they have been investing for the past 250 years but i think if i am not wrong we have been investing in all these places for the past 5000 years ago kurukshetra i myself uh, been a visitor to the place where lord krishna had uh, geeta okay so but now, so many people would die past kurukshetra on their way to shimla sir and nobody would really know that they would have a wake yeah that this was something in my in mahabharat but uh, what is the spot that i go to which has you know some sort of tour operator taking me around showing me so there is something missing there is an x factor missing there sir what is the scale are we talking about multi thousand crore scale of an opportunity here we are definitely it is multi thousand crore uh, opportunity and let me tell you if the government does some allocation which i expect from the government i would consider this not an allocation or expense i would consider this as a huge investment because okay. even if 10000 crore 20000 crore is invested that would give us multiplier in terms of taxation okay. gst income okay. tax so, so are much we, of are employment we seeing as, as an economy yeah, are we totally seeing successful you. models this called living history living history means that you don't wrap up these historical monuments in a plastic bag which nobody can touch without surgical gloves you open them up you make them accessible you look after them and the funds that are procured just think about it okay if you were to set up in sonali and up where they've discovered few thousand year old chariots few thousand year old chariots with the wheels and the weaponry intact now if you were to develop something there that would fund the further excavation which would then lead to more artifacts which would then attract more viewers and this is how it would be done and the thing is we don't have to loot the world like the british museum and collect everybody else's artifacts because we don't have any of our own we have of our own so let me get utpal call into this utpal call what is the scope of potential because if you think of india from abroad you think of taj mahal and that's it is that all we got uh thank you very much rishab you invited me for this very very important debate uh, which is uh this is the sector which i am working for last 40 years uh, heritage is my subject so i am promoting cultural heritage trips all over india from nepal to south of india the, the all the places you mentioned i have gone several times with big personalities of us europe and america what i wanted to tell you that the largest number of employment Uh, now i give you an example how heritage is very very important i give you my state kashmir's example this year 2 and 1/2 million 25 lakh 25 lakh tourists have gone to kashmir but do you know how many have visited the mata vishnu devi 1 crore and 50 uh, lakh That okay okay so we having a we have a connection issue with you but but i i got i got i got a you know an understanding of what you're saying here because 
when it comes to promoting religious tourism okay whether it's mata vaishno devi in india or, or like i said for people to go to mecca madina go to saudi arabia for the hajj uh, they travel there there is a significance there is a motivation to go there and and that's something which you should be celebrating now if i if i tell a friend of mine oh i'm going to ayodhya to see the ram temple by default do i then have to be apologetic about it it's it's a problem it's a problem right now so we need to think about it this way let me get ravi bhat into this ravi bhat you know the greatest of india's treasures you know are in the south of india because in the north some of the ancient artifacts uh, no longer exist we have to dig them up but even in the sites that do exist this religio cultural tourism which is not you don't have to be a hindu to go to the ram temple in ayodhya how do we how do we create an economy around this uh, rishab rishab the first of all well, let me tell you it's better to learn something our from our neighbor see in the uh, in the usa that the total contribution of the tourism in the us economy is roughly 518 billion dollars now it comes to china it is something something around 405 million dollar as per the survey conducted in 2019 and in india it is only 108 million dollar right and if you consider to japan you can germany france italy this is all, they all are around near around india the india only that is 110 Million dollar, billion dollar, hundred and seven billion dollar. So my question is, when China has four fold more, you know, the contribution in the economy of the U.S. dollars, why can't we Indian do it? No, no. Okay, but but Ravi, but what? This is the problem. No, for this for this to happen, something iconographic has to be in the Mr. minds of Mr. not Mr. only Mr. Indians Mr. but Mr. people Mr. all over the world. Let me complete. Mr. I request. Let me complete. Let me complete it. I said that that something very inspiring is there, and almost all the panelists have said, "Tell me a single thing which we do not have offered to our tourists, whether it's a it's a it's a cultural circuit, whether it's a religious circuit, whether whether it it is cuisine circuit, you whether it's a medical tourism, you name a single thing which US has to offer, and we don't have. And let me tell you that all of us." we have better than the europeans like for, like top 10 countries who are contributing to their nation yeah but ravi but you preach to the choir sir i am already convinced we have it so my question is that if yes. you know we are, now what's happened with this 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 ganga you know whatever cruise okay people are saying oh so expensive you know in a poor country like us what is this nonsense 25000 bucks a night do you, Rishab, do, we Rishab, a, Rishab, do we have a do we have a conceptualization Rishab, of what a ticket on the orient express costs Rishab, and people pay for it so we have a problem Rishab, sir we say don't build a we don't build the statue because it's a waste of money a gustav eiffel building the eiffel tower was also a waste of money no but when you go to paris you take a photograph in front of the eiffel tower how do we get out of this mindset sir this, this is what i'm i'm so happy that in your each and every program you keep on you know emphasizing on all that it is, it is required Rishab, you keep on telling and i'm very happy that we need to decolonize our mindset we need to de- i'm mean, i'm using your i'm using your term so for that see for ha- hello yeah we can hear you go ahead for sir, that mr but go ahead sir we can hear you fine go ahead finish your thought uh, so so i said uh, as you keep the link it requires to decolonize our mindset so the very first thing and i think this gradually it is happening that most of the indians with a now i started thinking we don't need an approval from the west we don't need approval from the from the developed countries to, to tell us okay. what is good what okay. is right what okay. is in, okay okay i'm going to ask the controversial question ravi but yeah. do i need to be yeah. hindu to be Come. looking excitedly at the ram temple in ayodhya do i need to be hindu absolutely sir absolutely not absolutely not it is simply like Like even Indian tourists when they go to Goa and non-Christians, they go into the churches. They admire the ch- architect, archi- architecture of the you know that's a uh, different churches. The same way okay. you don't okay. have. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm to, short of time, so I'm okay. Kashi, I'm short of time. I will come back and have this. I've done hundreds of hours of conversations on these matters, and I'll do them for however long I can. I can. I can. I can hold on to this job. 
Professor Nalapath, couple of places that you would really recommend to people watching this broadcast that are a must-see, once in a lifetime at least, within oh, India, sir. Uh, I'd like to say that, for example, in you know uh, uh, b b b the Bastar region of, uh, uh, which was uh, uh, once in, in Madhya Pradesh, and now it's a separate uh, state altogether. The point is, as as Mr. Mani has correctly said, there are so many traditions that are lesser known. I would not call them small traditions. I would say lesser known traditions that are so wonderful. So many people across India that are so wonderful, whose culture, whose customs, whose language, you know, the language is some of the dialects that you hear around you as you go into these so, you know, so-called far-flung areas, areas of the beaten track, as they say. They're so melodious and the people are so friendly and so inviting. It's uh, it's really something that gives you a real reinforcement of belief in human nature. Okay. So my point, Rishabh, there is no one place. There are a million places in India that you can go to. And I mean, I mean, you could you could you could spend the rest of your life traveling in India and still not have covered them all, and that and that's for sure. But I'm still going to try Shashank Mani, a few yeah. places that you would highly recommend. In India, people okay, go out and see. Can I Richard, take an attempt at the question you were saying? What, what is the unease about our temples or our historical monuments? I think the word decolonization has been used. I would like to be much more front of foot. I think this civilization has much to offer, not only to Indian citizens, 1.4 billion, but the world. And therefore, I think instead of thinking about this defensively, why they're not projecting, I think we have to, as a nation, a task ahead of us at the 75th anniversary, of projecting what is good in this civilization, including a deep respect for nature, which I think will create a new buzz in terms of how we present ourselves to ourselves mm. as well as internationally. Good example. Uh, coming to your question, sir, I would say that um, I, I would say Nalanda, I've just been to about two weeks back, is one place I would recommend. It's very, it's, I personally believe that places like Varanasi and Nalanda are not just historical monuments. The spirit of those people who live there, the many the many sages who traveled to Nalanda, the Hyun Sans of the world, the Fahens, and of course to Varanasi, those people, Kabir Zwani, those people, that spiritual experience is something that we have to explain to visitors. Okay. It is not the historical monument, but it's also the spirituality. Yeah, it's an, ex it's an experience, like I said, but you know, it's an experience. So if, if, if you know, there is a e tourist economy in Rajasthan, in the forts that has done this very well, we are struggling in other parts of the country, we can certainly do better. Akaj, in the couple of places that you know you've loved being, which are off the beaten track. Uh, one is Kurukshetra, uh, the land of uh, Gita. Secondly is... All of us, I mean, the, most of my friends, Hindus, they visit Haridwar. It's the most sacred place for us, bathing in the Ganga. But beyond Haridwar, there are a lot of ancient temples which people must visit. I mean, 50 kilometers beyond Haridwar, beyond Rishikesh, there's so much to explore. And okay. But there's one thing which I would like to add. Uh, Rishikesh, yeah, quickly, quickly, please. I'm, I'm over time, yes. Lo local infrastructure is something which needs to be done at various places. That is no, absolutely. Thing. You'll be holistic. But if you have to, again, if you reimagine, okay, uh, it's going to become, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a staggering opportunity because like I said, when you think of Egypt, what do you think of? The reason you go there is most probably for tourism and to see the pyramids. Uh, when you go to Italy, you're going there for tourism to see, I don't know, the, the Leaning Tower or, you know, the, the Forum in Rome. Uh, let me quickly take a quick last thoughts with, uh, with Utpal Kaul and, and Ravi Bhatt. Utpal Kaul, a couple of places that you really recommend people go and see. Uh, when uh, tourists will go to Kashmir, they must the Martan Temple. But I will also recommend Bhim Betika in Madhya Pradesh, which is uh, the rock um, rock carving. And, uh, okay, it is okay. more than okay. rock carvings in Madhya Pradesh and the Martan Temple in, 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 in Jammu so, and Kashmir. Uh, I recommend also. Uh, okay, Ravi Bhatt. Ravi Bhatt. We got enough of that of that connection to get that answer, sir. Ravi Bhatt, a couple of places you recommend, sir. I strongly recommend. The Pithoragarh in Uttarakhand, that is one place a person that can be developed and one person must go, it has a potential like a Switzerland. If you go there, you see the sites and other things, it, all it requires a little bit of infrastructure. Pithoragarh is the one place, I'll strongly recommend. Okay, alright. I've just had a rubric of a conversation because we think that uh, this is defunct. If it's old, if it's of no use. and Delhi itself, the capital city which I live in, is, is built on the seven ancient cities of Delhi. If we were to start digging, you would find three, four thousand years of civilization right beneath our feet. 
We don't because we think it's old and therefore it's useless. That's not the truth. History has to be lived. And if we have to live history, let's live our country's history. There's something fabulous about it. Uh, Bashams, yeah, wonder that was India, wonder that is India for sure. So on that note, this is a multi-billion dollar economic opportunity, not just for domestic tourism, but for people from all across the world. The reason we are messing it up, not only is because of mindsets in terms of where we aspire to go, but also when we, for example, hire a private agency to do some development or management work in Red Fort, and we say, oh, you privatize this monument. Oh my God. And it becomes a controversy. We have to change our approaches. And if we do, sky's the limit. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.